Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show and happy Monday to everybody. Looks like it's going to be a fairly decent day out there. We had a few storms skirt around me uh, yesterday. I was kind of watching those and thinking maybe something was going to pound down on me, but it didn't. Um, got a few things going today that I want to show you. And one of them is to tell you that our listings today are 18,700 and we have been that's what it was last week. It was like 18,650 and the week before that. So they climbed up and they stalled. And when we look at our seven day moving average, and there's a few comments here I'm going to get to in just a moment. Uh, thanks for the comments. That blue line is a number of new listings that are come on over a seven day period. They'll vary differently if you compare it to the Cromford report, but they're trending the same way. And you can see that it's just, it keeps going down. Um, so we're not getting more and more new listings. Now, homes under contract went up, but not by much, maybe 400 units. I alluded to this uh, last night. You know, be careful of the headlines. It'll say sales increased 20% because that ain't much. So we're seeing essentially that the market is stuck. We're stuck right here. We've gone up. We saw these big gaps here for a while that were like, you know, a thousand homes, 800 homes next week, 800 next week, 900. And now you're seeing uh, 16, 6, 16, 681 to 17, 140. That's 500. And then 17, 522, 400 units. So they're not flying onto the market. And I guess the best way to describe the market right now is it's just, it's just dead. Uh, sales are really low and uh, uh, listings are not, coming on at any kind of a clip. They came on pretty fast in June and uh, now they're just uh, kind of a snoozer. we got a comment here. It says, in my opinion, since nothing about this housing market's been normal over the past two years, price corrections bound to equally defy market norms and logic. That's a great point. We don't even know what normal is anymore. Now we're seeing price reductions happen a lot faster now than we did in 2005 and six, because back then nobody believed that prices could come down. Everybody was in denial. Everybody's buying because, you know, the price is going to continue to go up. Now everybody knows that prices can come down. So they're lowering their prices a lot quicker. And Sean says, what do prices do in a dead market? Well, it all depends on the, uh, the gap. And I'm going to show you that chart here in a moment. Um, this one here, again, is another look at new listings by day. So each color that you see on here is a different day, but each bar is the same time of the month. In other words, this is August. Uh, oh, let's see. August 12th over here is August 11th. So it's comparing apples to apples. And you can see that new listings here, they show it at 3,816. It's the lowest you've seen in this chart until you get back to 2014. Good morning, everybody. And uh, so beating a dead horse here, but here is a uh, <laughs> what what the heck is this chart here? This is the Cromford Market Index. Check that out. It's a leading indicator that right now is stating the obvious, right? We're down at about almost 100, about 120. Now, these charts are not going to be updated this week. Uh, Tina Tambour just got back from Alaska, and she's trying to catch up. And Michael's got some personal issues in uh in Britain that he's taken care of. So we're going to have some delay and some updated charts. Here's pending listings. They're dropping. And then we look at the Cromford market monthly average sales price. It was back here in the month of right towards the month of June, right at the beginning into May, 602,000. Now it's 546,000. Prices are coming down in a dead market. Um, if we have still have fewer sales out there than we have and listings are higher, the gap between the two prices will come down. So we can stay here in that number where listings are at 17, 18,000 and sales are only between 24 and 2,700 prices will come down. It's not until you start closing that gap that you get any pricing pressure. Now we have an interesting question here. Seeing open door properties with 100 plus days on market with tons of reductions, often 100,000, seeing the same thing. As we get closer to September 30th, do you see them accepting an offer 
for 50,000 below their current market price and thoughts on what will happen after the end of the quarter. All I can do is guess. There's a couple things running through my mind on that. I'm looking at it, you know, we're, we're and I'm working with a gentleman now and we're trying to scoop one of these up and uh, they're not, you know, when they go down a hundred thousand dollars, they feel like that's it. Um, it's interesting when you look at how much they paid for these homes, it makes you think they were trying to send a signal to the uh, federal trade commission before they got fined to say, look, we're not lowballing anybody. Look how much, you know, we're paying for these homes because they were off the charts. They're paying, you know, 580 and marking them up to 620. And now they can't even sell them for 425. Um, so when they market from 600 down to 425 and we try to come in at 380, they're just, they're just flicking us off the desk. They're saying, Hey Rick, we're still way off. Um, see what you can come up with. Um, so I really don't know how willing they are to go down. Um, I have no problem writing the offers, trying to see if we can pull them down further. And by September 30th, they want, you know, most of these offloaded. Um, it's possible, possible that they replicate what Zillow did when they started offloading. Now that they're going to kind of partner with them on their marketing and their strategies, Zillow just started bulking them up and selling them 200 at a time to, investors to use as rentals. So I think after exhausting all of the efforts to try and get rid of these homes, um, they may, they may come to that. So I don't know. I mean, they're not tipping their hat. <clears throat> I wish I knew. Uh, I look at it every day and, and I, I just shake my head. Wow. They went down and they did. They lowered a bunch of them on August 4th and today's the 15th. So I think uh, in about five days, I think they're going to, they're going to do another dump. They're going to, they're going to come down again. I think the strategy is that right when they come down is not a good time to try and lowball them because they feel like they've already lowered the price. So maybe the strategy should be if it's the 15th now, and you saw one that was lowered on the fourth, maybe then we can say, well, I expect by the 20th, they're going to lower the price. So let me help get them there. They might be more open to it at that point. Uh, Waterbug here says builder confidence just reported in negative range. Doesn't look like overbuilding is going to juice inventory. You know, I went to a new construction site uh, this weekend just to ask some questions, look around. And you know what really caught my attention? I didn't hear any hammers. I saw these rows of homes. Nothing, nothing happening. And a lot of them, this particular one was Pulte Homes. And what they did was they stopped selling for six months so that they could catch up. They're trying to get these homes ready to sell as spec homes. So they just said, we're, we've stopped selling and we're trying to get our inventory ready homes available because it's about almost 18 months now. And then she said, the other problem is it's things like when you get the cabinets delivered, they're missing one. It's just all kinds of weird things. She's every, every day. It's just, something odd happens. My wife and I are hoping to buy October, November. Fingers crossed it'll work out when we can afford what we need. Prices definitely heading down. Um, and like I said earlier, their uh, sellers are not uh, that against lowering their prices like they were because they still have a lot of equity. So, and a lot of the price changes that we see out there, keep in mind, it, it is the flippers and it is the eye buyers. So when we see these listing price reductions in there, you know, 1,200 of them are open door and offer pad. Here's some not so good news. We've been expecting, kind of thought maybe rental prices would come down and price per square foot. And it went up, went up from $1.37 to $1.41. So as people are saying, I'm sitting this out, I'm going to wait, I'm going to rent. You're not the only one saying, I'm going to set it out. I'm going to rent. And the uh, number of rentals that are available have not caught up yet. Uh, they will, uh, but they haven't yet. Mortgage rates, 5.33. They got down to about 5.1 last week on a national average. And this is a survey. So um, they're kind of in this zone, as you saw Pat talk about on Friday. You know, we're, uh, we need to break out above the trend line before we start seeing some more increases. And right now we just, we just don't know. Sean says uh, the rent or buy teeter totter. No kidding. You can get kind of dizzy. Um, so rent's not a bargain yet. 
and uh, and neither's buying. So, you know, everything is muddling along. There's there's some real school of thought out there that uh, uh, that this is going to stay where we're at for a long time. I know we're all expecting to see things flip quickly, prices get down. You know, there's buyers out there right now. They're just saying, "I'm waiting a year. Um, I'm waiting." for 25%. Everybody has a date or a number out there. And they're saying, I'm going to wait X amount of days or X amount of months before I jump in, just trying to guess that maybe things will be better. Um, and then looking at a percentage and saying, well, um, if it goes down by 20%, then maybe I'll be, I'll be interested. The psychology of that is if we quickly got to a 20% decline, I don't see a lot of people jumping back in because if it got there quickly, people would go, Ooh, you know, I don't want to catch falling knife. I'm going to wait till it's down 30. So, you know, nobody rings a bell when at the top or we're at the bottom, but when things are looking bleak, people tend to sit back and wait even, even longer. People wanted to buy when real estate was going up because they know that they could buy and their home was going to be worth more very soon, very quickly. So they didn't mind outbidding anybody because they knew that they'd, you know, they'd get catch up. A lot of that was going on. There was a lot of uh, fear of missing out. And uh, some people bought in 2021 and paid uh, a lot. And now they're just nervous. Uh, but if you're staying put, stay put. Somebody asked me the other day, said they were looking at a situation that thought they would buy and they were only going to own it four years. And I said, don't do it. Um, I don't, that's too short. It's too much risk there. Um, if you're going to stay more than five years, then I say, do it. And Sean says hindsight 2020, you know, whenever I go back and I look at those 2020 numbers and I look at trends that year had, even now I've, I was listening to a radio show yesterday. They talked about seasonality. They were saying, you know, things are really down and that, uh, um, you know, buyer traffic's down, but then she goes, but you know, a lot of people are on vacation. And I thought, you're really not looking at the data, are you? <laughs> you know, we're sales are down versus last August when people were on vacation or last July. She was actually looking at July numbers and she, and it's a radio show. And, you know, I listen to those every once in a while to see what's going on. And I've, um, my skeptical nature says, stop it. Just share the numbers for what they are. Cause they, I've never turned on a radio show, even in 2006 and 2007 and heard them say, man, this was looking bad. Never, never got an email from a title agency saying, Oh, Rick, uh, tell your buyers to sit tight. This is looking ugly. Just, you just don't see that. And so, and I get it, you know, it's a radio show. You're trying to pump things up and try to figure out how to get people to to purchase a home. And that's why you're there. The reason behind Peoria Glendale being so much more expensive than Avondale Goodyear for similar footage and layout. What makes that location much higher? Well, there's more to do up there. Um, it's, it's uh, the North end in the Valley here. You're closer to what I call the getaway zone, which is Prescott, Sedona, Flagstaff, um, Avondale and below interstate 10. There's just not a lot there. You don't have the baseball stadiums. You don't have the Cardinal Stadium. You don't have near as much shopping. Uh, now, areas of Buckeye right now are pretty pretty sparse, uh, but they're getting there. Um, they have a few more hills up there. So, you know, it's just more popular than south of, of I-10. And you have a little bit more freeway access with the 303 and the 202 than you do south of Interstate 10. So, um, but both of them are in the same boat and that is drive till you qualify. <laughs> you can't afford something in town. You keep going either farther east or farther west to see what you can come up with and what you can afford. So as we go forward and we start looking at these uh, inventory numbers, I don't see anything, anything anytime soon that's gonna make that number either pop over 20,000 or dip down to 16. If I were to bet, I'd say we're going to start seeing a downward trend in listings just because people are going to pull their homes off the market. I thought I'd sell it. I'd try. I'm not, nobody's coming to look at it. I've got a townhome coming up uh, next week and uh, we're looking at the pricing 
And it's the first time in a long time where I'm going, boy, I, I don't know if this price is the right price or not. I just don't know. I'm looking at the comps and going, it makes sense. Should be able to sell it with this price, but I don't know. Um, it seems like northern parts, 100000 more. It feels like you get way more house if you go south. Yes, you do. Uh, Goodyear is actually pretty high. Thanks, Rick, for keeping it 100. Um, I see people just kind of saying, just like sales right now, saying, I'm, I'm not going to keep my house on the market when I'm only getting one showing a week. And the townhome I got coming up, all I can say is let's just put it on the market and we'll see what happens. Because I saw two others sell, so that's encouraging. So I'm looking at that and going, okay, that's great. Where before, you could just look at comps and you could just say, well, you this one sold, this one sold, this one sold. I'm going to put us in this price range. I'm very confident. But when you get down to only have 2,400 to 2,700 contracts written over a seven-day period, you're spitballing again. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Take care, everybody.